everybody. I thought I'd talk about Arduin just really quickly, get something started. Um, I'm looking at the Lost Grimoire. This is the reprint. I'm already messing up the book. I can't help myself. Um, I have the original at home, it's, but I'm at work, so I brought the reprint. Um, Arduin. It is a world of endless possibilities. Uh, it is its own game system at this point. Uh, new rules are coming out for it. They are in the process of um, game testing, I think, or getting it to the point where they're going to game test. And they want to make sure they're doing it right in first choice. They want to put out a really quality game. Um, even though Arduin's been around for a long time, David Hargrave, he made a lot of material, and he was ahead of his time. So I have the original rules. There's legacy rules, which are um, D100, I believe, is, is the system. I don't have those yet, so can't really speak much on their mechanics. There's lots of fun stuff in here in, in the Arduin books. Um, I'll show you the book you should get if you want to understand old school Arduin. And it is really, it says it's three books, it's really like four. Cause you got an adventure in there, you got, you got, you got so much extra stuff. Arduin is the name of the kingdom. I believe the planet's called Cass off the top of my head. Um, but it's, it's, it's a different world. Like our sun rises in the east, sets in the west. There it rises in the west and sets in the east. Um, and I say it's, it's a world of Everything's possible. Anything's possible. Because it really is. Um, so the setting's interesting. The, the rule dynamics are interesting. The, there's philo uh, philosophical differences in the game mechanics between Arduin and D&E. &E. Um, some of the approaches are different to, to, to classes, to who has classes, what that might look like. Um, even how you go about making your characters starts from a different premise. What you do first is different uh, and there's reasons for it. And the reasons become evident when you go through the, the system of creation. So it's, it's a very different, but very fun setting. And they call it Gonzo, but as I'm gonna show you from this book here, which has, this is just like a, it's got everything. It's got cool magic stuff. It's got monsters. Don't worry about the red dwarves. Yeah, yeah it's, it's just got, it's got all kinds of stuff. But let's just take a few of the questions he poses for the ecology of monster creation. Yeah, dude. He writes like these the chapters are like little articles, a lot of them. And so... Um, he, and some, some things are truly written for dungeon masters. Other things looks like they were written for the players of the characters so that they would understand their expectations. So it's, it's, I enjoy reading his stuff and going back and rereading. Like I've read this part, I'm going to read to you already, but it's still great stuff. So... Here's some thoughts on creatures. Will the creature be consistent with the ecology of the area or the world where it will be living? Well, that's pretty practical for a guy who came up with air squids. If it is inconsistent with world ecology, is there a plausible reason for it being there anyway? And can it survive in an ecology it is not normally native to? Again, practical or a fantasy setting. If it is a singular creature, is it of sufficient longevity to exist in the game world for long periods of time, centuries or more? Long-term vi viability of your monster. Can it reproduce itself, either alone or does it need a mate? What does the creature live on? In other words, eat. Can it get such in the area, world, you have located it upon? If it can't, can it substitute something else, 
native to your world ecology so it can survive. Will the introduction of the creature, creatures, destroy or drive away the native creatures normally found in the area? If they are driven out, then where have they gone and why? Wouldn't this ecological disruption be noticed? If not, why not? You would notice if all the creatures from the next kingdom over or area next to your kingdom suddenly decided to move. Yeah, some extra deer is cool, but not all the deer. Some extra rabbits are cool, but not all the rabbits. Go look up what happened to Australia when they had their, their um, rabbit and mice plagues. Just imagine all the animals leaving an area. And then those are the prey animals. Everything that they've got to eat that eats them, follows them. And that's just the animals. What about more intelligent beings, like uh, weak, intelligent monsters? They're going to be displaced too, if it's really scary. Will the local inhabitants perceive the arrival of, of the new creatures to be a dire threat to themselves, their crops? If so, why have they not killed it? or them, or chased it them away. Or, if that's impossible, the creature's just too big, strong, and powerful. Will this cause the local inhabitants to themselves flee to safer areas? If not, why not? So, there are suddenly refugees pouring into your kingdom, your guys come from, your team of mercenaries and and uh, and scum, the kind of scum adventurers like to, to play, um, are, are, are suddenly all these people coming in. And, or if they're not, why not? What's preventing them? Does the new creature type have anything to define commercial value? Fur, perfume, essence, leather, horn, ivory, etc. <laughs> that might lead to a concerted effort to hunt them out of existence for monetary gain. Venture hook. Look, I am that kind of player. When we kill something, if we kill something in the game, I'm like, can, can this be used to make weird grenades? Can we, can we make a weapon out of it? Can, can we sell some part of it? Should we collect samples and take it to the alchemist? I mean, that, that's, that's t t totally me monetary game. <laughs> How can we make some money off of this situation? <laughs> Gotta pay for those medical bills. <laughs> Is the creature so difficult to kill or so powerful that very few, if any, player characters could ever hope to prevail against it? Mm, what are you up to, DM? What are you making there? Even in numbers. And if... This is so, are you absolutely sure you really want something in the, in the game that can wipe out just about anyone it meets? Too many dead player characters can make a game a lot less fun. Okay, so there's a difference between being a tough DM who gives challenging games. There's a difference between knowing, hey guys, I've got this killer adventure for you it really is a killer so we're going to do some one-time characters to do this thing because you're probably all going to die that that's different it's different um uh you know like i said being a, a, a kind of strict dm about death and dying and making good challenges for people people know what they're getting into versus being the dm who really is purposely no outs for the for the party trying to do total party kills every time. Yeah, you, no one's gonna want to play after a while. So that's a little advice. <laughs> is the creature really new and and unique, or is it just cute variation of six others, generally the same kind already in existence? Yeah, we've all seen that, right, guys? And I'm I'm all for tweaking stuff, but it's not like they need um. Really need a special, whatever. 
Um, uniqueness should be a prime requisite for any new addition to the hordes of critters proliferating throughout the multiverse. We don't need another of the same. Thank you. You know, I kind of felt that way about elves at some point in Dungeons and Dragons. How many? And, and, and like some of the, so when they like, when it got kind of like weird, it's like, look, if you want cultural differences, that's fine. That's cool. But do we really need all these variations? Can it just be like, yeah, the elves who live in the Arctic are like this, and the elves who live over here are like this. You know, desert elves are kind of like this, but not the way it became. Just saying. I, I get where he's going with that. So you, if you want to make something, make it unique. Make it properly unique. And he, he talks about a little bit more in here, but th those those are very practical points for a guy who came up with air squids and air sharks and really other crazy stuff. You know, don't make monsters that wipe out the party constantly because then nobody's going to want to play. Don't, you know, think about, think about um, what the monster does, how it affects the environment around it. And how that affects the commoners, the peasants, you know, the people who live in those areas, uh, the animal life, the plant life. I mean, what what's going on there? Um, you know, give your their hooks to a certain degree. I mean, your players could be someplace where a monster shows up, and nobody can leave that place easily. I mean, that could be a thing, like you're on an island. Um, so you can't just leave, per se. Um, it could be something like that. Or it could just be the natural um, environment. You know, in the middle of winter, you know, you're in, you're in a valley somewhere and you're surrounded by mountains. You're not leaving. You're stuck in that valley. You know, unless you've got some kind of way to magically get to the other side of the mountains. But certainly the whole town can't leave. So so I think that's what he's getting at is thinking about what situations would cause, say, the situation like in the movie A Thing. They can't just leave. They're in the Antarctic. It's just research stations, isolated research stations. It's a scenario there, and they're on their own, you know. Yeah, supplies come in, but that's on a schedule, and if the weather's right and all that kind of stuff, go go read up on living in the Antarctic. You'll see. You can't just, you know, you can't just leave. You know, there's an ocean, but there's no boats. You know, it's a situation, you know. Boats can't get through, whatever. So it's you and the big scary monster and it's killing everything so that would be an example of why nobody could leave um so those are things to think about and every time i've read one of his books got my mitts on a book and sat down and started reading it where it's some monsters or some some idea some idea jumps out at me every time. And that's why I like Arduin. It's just full of ideas, full of new ways of thinking. Like, I could play D&D and go, I want to take an idea from Arduin and put it in D&D. &D, and I can do it. Um, the new rules are coming out, though, in first choice. I guess, um, so I'm really excited about that. Uh, we'll see when those come out. They already do have a new product up, which I got to order. Uh, uh, stuff for me to buy. I am not, whatever it is, I, I'm not getting paid or whatever. I just like Ardoon. I'm so glad somebody gave me, my husband, a couple of books that we looked at and flipped through and said, cool. And the more we looked at them, the more we said, cool. And, and then... Um, 
I'm glad I can get new reprints of everything. So I'll be sharing more on our, our Dune because there is a lot of cool stuff, like, and philosophically different, like how charisma is looked at or how hit points are looked at or how you roll your abilities for your character, what determines what dice you use, stuff like that. So it's it's a very it's very different, um, but it but there are things from it that I have literally sat. I mean, mechanical things and gone. Next time I DM, if I'm not doing straight up Arduin, I'm doing a version of D and D, even five E. Um, I'm I'm gonna maybe use that. It's from a crunchier time though on the mechanics, but don't fear the mechanics. Never fear mechanics. Um, try them out first. Always try out a game's mechanics first before you're like, ooh, I don't like that. Because it might work better than you thought. Or it might give you an idea about how to make something else work in another game, so on. Never, never fear mechanic, statistic, dice, uh, rules, ideas. Try them out first. Try them out first. Then decide. Uh, what you want to do with them. I tried out 5e as written before I said, ah, I want to change some stuff. Did it Did it that way so I'd have an understanding. Um, so, you, so that's what I'm saying. Try out stuff. Um, never be afraid to borrow stuff from other game systems. If it makes your game work better, do it. So if Arduin, if something in Arduin makes your game work better, use it. I, I really, I do, I have an adventure I'm thinking about doing and, and uh, I'm really thinking about setting it up to be straight Arduin. So how do you get people to play games they haven't played? Here's how I do it. Well, what's this game that you're talking about? Well, it's just crazy d and Oh, okay. <laughs> Old school essentials. Let's go play that, which is what we're playing right now. Um, heavily influenced by AD and D, um, but um, that's what the DM's doing. I'm not the DM, but yeah, when we brought it up, they were like, "What's that?" D and D. Okay, <laughs> you know, you know, Gamma World, mutant, mutant crawl classics. What's that? D and D with lasers and uh, mutants. Okay, <laughs> you can pretty much. That's all you have to do. Explain it to people. It's it's D and D in space. It's D and D. Uh, in the, in the cowboy days, it's D and D, you know, it's, 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 you seen Mad Max movies? Yeah. It's D and D like that. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's, that's all I ended up doing. And people are like, oh, it's D and D, but we only use two dice. And we only use six sided dice this time. We only, you know, whatever. And people are like, oh, okay. Um, usually I find that works. <laughs> Just saying. And if you ask me, since... I'm used to borrowing stuff from different systems. You know, it's it's all D and D. It's all D and D. Just different ideas about how to make those dice roll. Because something like Arduin started out as D and D. House rules, house rulings. Because it came from a time period when people didn't have a whole lot of clarifications. So they had to make up their own rules. They had to interpret it themselves until more stuff came out. By then, they had pretty well set game systems going on at their tables. Uh, it's all about setting though, and I'm telling you right now, the world Arduin, Kingdom of Arduin is on, is cool. It's got portals, it's, it's got everything. Aliens, lasers, high magic, low magic, it, it's, it's got it all. So everybody, be safe. I hope everyone treats you well if you're working. Um, if you're in a uh, potentially dangerous situation or in an area that's been hit hard, I hope you're getting all the help you need. My prayers go out to you. There's uh, quite a few people. Some bad things have happened over the week. So um, just know people do care. And uh, we're rooting for you. So like, subscribe, tell me what you think. Anyway. Take it easy, everybody. Bye.